All right, welcome to FSOD Coach's Corner. Uh, I'm Bruce Badgley. There's Daryl Daniel. And boy, we're really happy to have Dave Hahn from uh, Mannheim Central. Wow, Coach, 2-0 and start. What are you thinking? Uh, you know, we're, we're happy with the 2-0 and start. Um, you know, we've uh, played two 6A programs um that i think you know cumberland valleys is is going to uh continue to rise and get better and hempfield hempfield has got a good team you know so we're we're excited about that we're happy with it you know we know we got things to work on so we're cautiously optimistic is uh is the team you have through two games the team you thought you were gonna have um yeah i i think so I, th I think we uh, we we show a lot of promise. We show a lot of potential. We've we've come a long way in the last you know four and a half five weeks, um, and coming together as a team. Um, so I think the sky's the limit for these guys because we've got some talented kids that work hard. Um, but we're not you know we're just not where we want to be yet, and it's early in the season, so that's to be expected. I think the biggest thing you know, coach. We've we've obviously over the years we've talked about a lot. Last year, especially for your for your team, not having an off season was huge because of the work you guys put in an off season. And remember, we talked about that not being able to get that line developed. Not you know, a judge being a first time starter. Tell, I guess, I guess, tell us how ha, with having an off season this year, how big of an advantage or how do you feel like your team advanced compared to last year? Yeah, I, I you know, everybody just so I set the record straight, everybody was, you know, under the same circumstances in, in 2020. Um, but I just personally, I believe the the small schools that, that do more, that work hard, um, were kind of at a disadvantage because um, that's their, their edge that allows them to perform better, you know, that off season training and what we do. And, and it's no, no secret. I mean, we do a lot with our guys, um, trying to educate them in football, just like a lot of others. Um, but, you know, and we're doing the seven on sevens. We're doing the inside runs. We're we're doing the team workouts. We do the mini camps and things like that. We didn't get to do any of that in 2020. So in 2020, I thought the teams that with the teams that were just, you know, bigger schools, more talent, um, were able to beat those hardworking schools because those hardworking schools didn't get to do their thing. This year, it's a little bit different. So this year, we're back to kind of finding our edge, um, work, trying to outwork everybody, outwork our opponents uh, during the offseason, and then continue to work hard during the season. And I think that's start, you know, that's that that's paid off for us a little bit. Um, so, you know, I may I'm, that's just what I think. You know, it doesn't mean I'm right. It's just what I think, you know, and I that, believe. That's why we have this show is to, you know, get the coaches uh, you know, with their opinion, talk a little bit about the, the and I think you, you just have an enormous advantage there in Mannheim Central with the culture that surrounds your program. Talk a little bit about how that benefits you with with this community support that's just incredible there in that town. Yeah, our, our community support is second to none. Um, but, you know, I believe that that's that's in a lot of sports, you know, it's not just uh, exclusive to football. I think there's, there's support, you know, whether it's, it's a, any athletic team, it's the band, it's the theater, it's, it's whatever it is, man, I people rally around each other and help each other out. And, uh, and it, and they definitely do it in football too. So it's, it helps, it helps us. Um, and it allows us to kind of teach our guys, like, don't take this for granted. You know, it, it's about, these people are helping you now pay it forward, help others um, and give back to your community too. Uh, and I think that's the kind of culture that, you know, well, long before I came, I think Mike, Mike was doing that. And I think, uh, you know, it's my job to make sure that it continues to happen. Daryl, you got a question for coach? Well, yeah, you know, just obviously being, being a CV guy and understanding the, the, the rivalry with Mayheim Central, I think the biggest thing in, the, in which, you know, being around a program, being in this position now, being as a trainer and being able to work with a lot of different teams and schools and, and, and being able to be around Mannheim and coach Hahn and coach Williams and stuff like that. 
I, I think the coolest thing is that the the lineage, the guys before this group here, the guys that played in the past, the guys, the guys that come back to the program and support the kids. I talk about how that how big that is. Obviously, you have Nagy, Nagy as a head coach. Um, you've had numerous players in and like Kreider and all those guys I, I played against. How big is that when those guys come back? Uh, and, and how much does that help your football program? Yeah, that I, it's huge. Uh, it's a big part of our program. Um, we want all of our players to come up through the program to, you know, to, to experience that feeling, that family um, in the program, and that they're, they've always got their family here, that they are always welcomed back. You know, we understand that guys get older, they move on, they got their lives, they got their start mm-hmm. their families, and we get it. But we still got a lot of guys who are standing down on that alongside that fence that have worn the maroon and gray and are there supporting, um, whether they've got little kids that are there or maybe they live in another district, but they're coming back to watch. Um, and that's that's extremely important because our kids see it. They recognize it. Um, they hear the people talking. And, and we've got a lot of guys that are involved with our youth program that played and communicate with our kids that are playing now. Um, and that, that carries a lot of weight in this town and it, it means a lot to us. Um, it's great seeing former players give back and be active. So it's, it's just a, that circle, you know, it just continues to, to go around and around. You know, uh, you're two and oh, you've had two home games. Now you've got a road test against, uh, you know, Susquehanna Township. So what are you looking for? Uh, you know, out of township and what are some of the things that, that you're going to have to do to, you know, come on out on top this week? Well, one of the things we got to do is, you know, two and oh is great, and, uh, but you, we got to remain humble. Uh, you know, just you know, two and oh, we won uh, against Hempfield 14 nothing, but that could have easily been, you know, it could have been a different story. One or two plays could have changed the tide of that game. Um, so we just got to remain humble and continue to work hard. Um, that's kind of our battle cry right now. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll see. We got to prepare these kids how to travel. Uh, how to hit the road and, and be business-like um, and then still go out and have fun, play the game, you know, be relaxed, but still go out and play the game hard, play the way uh, that they're capable of playing. Uh, that's going to be a good test for us. I mean, Susquehanna Township, um, they're on two right now, but they, they have some skills on, on the field, you know, and, and they can take the ball. If they, you know, they get a lucky bounce their way, that lucky bounce can, they'll take it 60 on you. So, you got to be very, very careful. You got to be detailed. We got to be sound in our game plan and in our execution, or else we could be in for a long night. Right. And plus, you guys, you know, as everyone knows, you guys have a history with them over the years. You know, I mean, dating back a while. So that's always been a good game. So I know you guys would be prepared for that and, and ready to compete because, like you said, two and zero is is great. But every single week, you got to go one and zero, which obviously we, right. we talk about all the time. You got to be ready to go one and zero. So. Um, you can't wrestle on your laws. You can't wrestle on what happened in the past. Um, right. You know, that's something you talked about, you know, this previous game. You told, told those guys last week was last week. This is a new week. And, you know, we got to be ready to play. So I, I think that's big because the kids are able to hear that from you. And then the thing is really cool about that environment is like the whole community echoes the same thing. There's no um, like every single parent wants their kid to play Manheim Central football. Like, and that's what's really cool about it. That's I think that's what's different. What Bruce was trying to get at it before. I think that's what's really different because everybody wants their kid to play for me. I'm central football. So, um, and I think when you have a culture and we have a community like that, you're able to coach and be who you are and not have to worry about the other things because guys, people understand football is not a right. It's a privilege. And that whole community understands that. And I think that's, that's why you guys have been successful so long. Uh, I, I won't disagree with you. <laughs> I think you could be right there. All right. well, let me let me ask you. You know, who are some of the guys that uh, that that you're going to have to lean on this season? You you've got a, a really you know we talked through the summer about I I think you know and obviously you have to go one and zero oh, but you know it, you have an enormously difficult schedule playing a lot of big schools um, so you know you're going to have to it, it's a it's a marathon not a sprint and so. Who are some of the guys and what are some of the things that your team is going to have to do well to perform well this season against the competition that you face? 
number one, we got to stay healthy because our numbers are at about 49. We have 49 on the team. Um, and then we, we really, truly have to lean on everybody on the team from the top guy to the bottom guy because uh, we need those. You, you know, you win the, the games played on Friday night, but you also win that game during the week and your preparation and what you do. And it's so important for all of those, all the kids on the team to understand that their value during the week is what helps produce the wins on Friday night. So I hate underestimating that. Like we, our kids have to know, like you're a big part of every week, every win um, and what you do throughout the week. So we can't afford to lose anybody. But when you talk about, um, you know, players on the field, starters and stuff, um, our line is key for us this year. Uh, we've grown so much from last year and I don't mean physically, I, probably more so mentally, our defensive line, they, uh, they like to get after it. They move their feet. Well, they use their hands. Um, they like to, they like to get hit the quarterback. And, and the one thing I like about our defense right now is we, we like to gang tackle. Everybody wants a piece of the ball. Um, and that's, that's pretty good, but it starts up front. Um, and then it continues at that second level. We got three pretty good linebackers. They're all juniors, but they're they're playing like experienced veterans. Um, and then uh, um, offensively, again, we we've got we've got five guys back on the line. Um, one of them, our right tackle, played a little bit on the line last year. He actually started out the beginning of the year on the line, and then just kind of transitioned to just defense. But he got plenty of reps. So we truly have five guys back. And even though we probably we weren't where we need to be last year. Um, we came in to the off season and and camp. We were just light years ahead of where we were. We were picking up things that last year would have just they would have just ran right by us. We wouldn't have recognized it. Wouldn't have saw it. This year, just having that you know eight game experience just helped us out tremendously. So I think they're a big part of what we're doing offensively. Um, Judd Novak is you know he's a senior. He's a a leader amongst the team um he's been a key cog in the wheel and then uh Owen Sensening is another one who's just a, he's a playmaker we have other guys that are supporting Cass and they're doing a great job too um week one we were able to get the ball deliver the ball to to uh 10 different receivers um and and that was pretty good you know week two it was four or five um it wasn't it wasn't as well executed but we need all those guys yeah it you know, the one thing that I always marvel at is like <laughs> time management for a, for a football coach during football season. I mean, how does that work? I mean, <laughs> I mean, do you have any time for yourself? I mean, you know, I mean, some coaches uh, are almost mandating now that, you know, their coaching staff has got to spend some time with their family. Talk a little bit about how you know, you work through that, that dilemma, that, that, uh, you know, uh, that, that work-life, uh, you know, balance uh, during football season. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, as I was growing up as a young coach and I was 20 years under Mike, you know, I had the young kids and, and, uh, and I understood, I, I tried to do everything I could to go to see my kids play in their sporting events. I didn't see everything. Um, I'm, you know, and I, I missed that. Um, but I, I have some young coaches on staff that have kids and we, we, I do try to make that work around their schedule. Um, Hey, if you have to miss and come back and, and, and you can still get done what you got to do, go do it. Um, so you don't miss out on those things. Um, for me right now, you know, my kids, other than my son, he's, he's on the team this year. Um, my, my older two are, you know, out of college, you know, they're, they're both working. So it's, it's a little bit different. So I have a little bit more time. Um, but it's, it's always a challenge to kind of manage everything you're doing because it, it's more than just coaching. You got your, your job, you know, for me, it's teaching, coaching, um, you're, you're counseling kids and working with families. You know, you, you're, you've got uh, fundraising, you got booster clubs you're dealing with um, and it just keeps going on and on. So it's, it's a juggling act. Uh, I, I got a lot of pieces of paper laying around everywhere with notes, you know, got to do this, got to do that. Um, I'm, st I'm, I'm slowly starting to kind of get back into that groove that, that year, last year, um, like 2019 going into 2020, that really, really threw me off, you know, cause I was always very detailed oriented, had the notes every day to do list every day. And uh, when you get out of that, because you're, 
you know, we're all at home, working from home, and you don't have that day-to-day -day interaction. That was, uh, you missed things when we came back. And I'm starting to get back into that, you know, very detailed, having a day-to-day -day plan. Um, but it, it threw me out of sync, but we're getting back there now. Good. Do you have a, a final question there for Coach Daryl? Well, I mean, you know, see, but, you know, Coach and I, we talk often, and, you know, I'm over there a lot. So um, I, I guess my last question would be, you know, obviously, you know, you talked about staying healthy. Um, what, what is the biggest development? Obviously, Judd and, you know, he, he got that one year on the belt. Who are you, who are you looking at this year um, as far as seeing the biggest improvement from? Who, who are you excited to see? Because I know we talked about the offensive line. What, what guy or what, what group are you looking to um, make big strides compared to what they did last year? Listen, I, it's hard to stop at one. Honestly, yeah. I mean, you, it, it, there's been so much improvement um, in so many different aspects of our team just because of the, the offseason that we were allowed to have this year. Right. Uh, how hard that they worked in the weight room and their training. You know, a lot of them, all of them are in the in the weight room with us. And then we encourage guys if they want to go and do some of the extras to, to go do some of the extras. And, and uh, you know, if they want to be good, that's what they got to do. And and they've done it. Um, but you know, obviously Judd is one, our receiving core, you know, we, we've got, we, we went from, okay, we really had sense Nick last year, but now, now we could throw names out there. Like we got Lastinger and across from him and we've got Brady Harbach, we've got Mason Weaver. Then, then you throw in Landon McGallagher um, and, and we've got some young guys that are coming up through that are really pushing and working hard um, with our receiving crew. They've done well. Justin Hefferman at, at the tailback position mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. last year battled some injuries and uh, and he really he really struggled to find his groove. And this year he's come out. He's you know, I think he's 199 yards in two games, um, you know, but they've been workman like yards. Mm -hmm, you know, he's not mm -hmm. he's not just breaking the open field and going. He's getting five, six yards at a clip and he's taking on hits and he's you know, he's delivering the blow. Um, we really haven't gotten Jaden White into the mix there yet because he was battling a little bit of an ankle injury, and uh, and he's starting to come around now. He, now he's been playing defense, but he'll probably pick up some more carries to give us that one-two punch between Justin and and uh, and, uh, and Jaden. Yeah. yeah, and and then we've got uh, Larry Marley, who's made big strides. Now Larry plays defense for us. He played corner last year, but he's kind of been that swing position. So he's been a tailback, but he's also helping us out at receiver. And he's been yeah. he's he's been real important to us where we haven't really unveiled him yet either at that position. At, it, really, at either position, we've kind of let him settle into corner right now because it's early right. in the season. We want to, you know, try to try to keep our guys as, as fresh as we can. Um, but he's going to be another one that we're going to count on. Obviously, our line. Uh, one of the big additions, though, to the team has been Logan Hostetter. Logan Hostetter is a basketball player. Um, he's a senior. He played when he was in the MAA program, and we were able to get him back out. And our one concern going into camp was, like, look, he's getting better and better as a receiver, better and better as a route runner. Can he hit and block? Well, in the last two games, yeah. he's he's done that for us uh, tenfold. Um, he's he's a good one. He's done real well. I'm excited about him and what he's doing. Um, so it, there's offensively, defensively, you know, we got one of the big additions for us. He's been with the team for the last two years, but he's been injured both years is Landon Watson. Um, he's a big defensive tackle for us and he's got a motor. Um, then we got Fauna Stock back. We got yeah. Lo Logan Saunders back, who was a defensive end for us last year, who's kind of playing a hybrid defensive end, drop linebacker for us this year. Um, and, uh, and then we have Jaden, who we transitioned Jaden from linebacker to defensive end. And that kid is just fast and explosive off the ball. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. Keeps, he keeps his feet moving through people. I um, mean, as a line guy, that's, that's one of the things I'm always looking for. You know, uh, how do they come off the ball? Do they use their hands? But more importantly, how do they move their feet? Right. Do, do their feet stop on contact and then they restart or do they do they go through contact? Jaden's one of those guys, his feet just kind of go through contact. He keeps moving. Um, so he's been a great addition there. Uh, one of the names that I knew Rocco Doherty was going to be a stalwart for us at linebacker. Um, but the other one that I thought had a shot to be really good is Nick Haas, who's a young junior. And he's he uh, in week one. 
he proved it in probably about the fourth or fifth <laughs> snap of the game. Right. Cumberland Valley, Cumberland Valley ran an ISO right ISO, out of him. Yeah. And he filled the B gap, took that kid down and just put him on his back and then hit the tailback. And it was like, okay, this kid can play varsity football. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. we got some linebackers that kind of, you know, throwback guys from nineties, you know, and that's, yeah, yeah. You, you like that, you know, and, and our secondary, everybody's back. We like that. Everybody's back. They've all got experience, you know, Mason Weaver, um, Landon McGallagher, we got Larry and we got uh, Owen Sensen to get corner. So right. we got everybody back. So I, that's everybody. I mean, I, I'm excited about all of them. I think, <laughs> exactly, they've, man. I, right. I think they've all made great strides and improved. Right. It's, right. It's, and, and I guess the, the off season is huge. I'm telling you, like this, this, to see the development from those guys from year to year and, and seeing their growth in that weight room, that's been awesome. Yeah. Yes. It well, it's, it, it's great to see the excitement that you have for your team. Uh, coach uh want to thank you for you know these few minutes i know it's uh you know the, the work-life balance here we don't have a lot of time but we really appreciate getting together with you and uh you know we'll see maybe we'll have to have you on a you know a postseason edition here too you know we got you know fingers crossed that uh you know we'll see you in the postseason we hope so we'll keep working hard and see what we can do all right, Coach. Hey, listen, thank you very much for your time and best of luck this week against Susquehanna Township. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. All right, take All right. care.